Once the virtually designed surgical guide has been 3D printed and trimmed, confirm the fit and function by placing the surgical guide onto the 3D printed GRS surgical model. Then remove the guide from the model and verify that the guide tubes are free of any irregularities, which could compromise the complete insertion of the GRS surgical ring. Next, lightly air abrade the external surface of the GRS ring. This process will microscopically texture the surface of the ring while also increasing the overall surface area, ensuring maximum retention and bonding of the ring to the surgical guide. Visually, the external surface should appear dull and free of any shine when sufficiently air abraded. Now it's time to assemble the color-coded GRS surgical ring and surgical guide analog. With the internal retention features of the GRS surgical ring positioned at the bottom, insert the surgical guide analog from the opposite side. Once assembled, the analog should be completely supported and fitting securely inside the GRS surgical ring. Insert the assembled components into the guide tube or tubes of the surgical guide and confirm a snug fit. If the fit is too tight and cannot be inserted or too loose, having limited support by the surgical guide, appropriate steps should be taken at this time to ensure that the relationship between the surgical guide assembly and each guide tube has a firm, secure fit. After the fit has been confirmed, remove the assembled GRS surgical ring and surgical guide analog from the surgical guide by using a blunt instrument. Care should be taken not to distort the internal retention features of the surgical ring. Now, place a light film of dental or medical grade adhesive on the outer surface of the surgical ring and on the inner surface of the guide tubes. Then, reinsert the assembled GRS unit into the guide tube and position the GRS surgical ring so the upper surface of the ring is flush with the upper surface of the guide tube. Any unnecessary or excess adhesive should be removed at this time. If a dual cure adhesive is used, the complete set time for the adhesive will vary according to each manufacturer's specifications. If a light curable adhesive is used, Simply light cure the adhesive by using a standard dental curing light or laboratory curing unit that uses light and heat to polymerize the adhesive used to bond the GRS surgical ring to the surgical guide. Both light curable and dual cure adhesives can be used when creating a GRS surgical guide and may vary in application based on the clarity, density, and thickness of a chosen surgical guide material. Complete curing is essential, so take any and all steps necessary to guarantee complete polymerization of all adhesives. Once completed, place the GRS surgical guide back on the model to confirm a stable fit, noting an accurate alignment that is free of any interferences. Once the curing process has been completed, simply remove the surgical guide analog from the newly formed surgical guide with a GRS IR tool. Then, thoroughly wet all surfaces of the surgical ring and surgical guide and place back on the model. By wetting all surfaces, this will simulate a surgical environment and will lubricate all joining surfaces between the surgical ring and surgical sleeve. It is important to reinsert and remove the surgical guide analog with the IR tool two to three times under these conditions in order to confirm the proper fit and retention of both the surgical sleeves and surgical guide in a clinical surgical setting. Once the fit and function of the GRS surgical guide has been confirmed, it is time to set all drill stops of the surgical drill sequence. Begin by removing the surgical guide analog with the IR tool 
and insert a surgical sleeve that corresponds with the initial pilot drill to be used. If the drill shank cannot pass through the narrow diameter surgical sleeve for the pilot drill, use a 2.35 millimeter or slightly larger GRS drill sleeve in order to allow the initial drill to insert completely to the bottom of the osteotomy in the 3D printed model. After verifying that the GRS surgical sleeve has been seated completely, simply insert the initial pilot drill with a loose fitting drill stop through the GRS surgical sleeve until it reaches the bottom of the hole in the 3D printed model. If any binding is noted when inserting a drill into the drill sleeve, or if the drill cannot reach the bottom, then use a slightly larger diameter GRS drill sleeve until the drill reaches the planned depth. Once complete insertion has been confirmed, firmly tighten the set screw of the GRS drill stop with the GRS drill stop driver. Now, remove the drill with the affixed drill stop from the GRS surgical guide and model and place the drill into the GRS depth gauge with the drill stop secured within the drill stop channel. Then rotate the knob located on the GRS depth gauge. The adjustable slider will then travel to lightly engage the tip of the drill. The resulting measurement found on the upper shell of the depth gauge is accurate to 0.1 millimeter and represents the exact position to affix this and all subsequent drill stops on the remaining drills of a surgical sequence in order to precisely replicate the desired osteotomy. Once completed, place all drills with the affixed drill stops, GRS drill sleeves, and IR tools into the GRS surgical cassette and sterilize according to current infection control guidelines. Finish by disinfecting the GRS surgical guide by following the guidelines applicable for all removable oral appliances. The GRS surgical guide is now ready for clinical use and will provide for the most accurate, precise, and convenient dental implant placement available today.